Hey everyone, so this is Zach Gage. I'm gonna record a video of Cousin and talk through all of my strategy. Cousin's pretty difficult to play right now because you have to read a PDF and then go and find a friend to play in this janky online game that we made. So I thought maybe the best way to get it out to you all and start to maybe show off some of what I'm excited about about the game is just to record a video where I talk strategy. The basis of Cousin is that you play it uh, one person versus another person. So right now I'm playing against Fred, who helped program the game, uh, Fred Benenson. And the goal of the game is to, over a number of different rounds, win 70 victory points of your opponent's cards. So in Cousin, when you capture cards, they're moved to the jail, and they're not returned to the deck, so in the next hand that you play, those cards don't exist again. Um, in Cousin, you generate strength through building either uh, runs of cards or pairs of cards. So a run of cards, uh, it has to be at least two cards and is worth one strength point for every card in the run, and then pairs are worth three strength for, for the pair. So for example, um, if I show you here, uh, if I make a pair here, the game will show me that I have three strength in this column. I don't have any runs in my hand right now, so I can't show you exactly how that works. Uh, but you'll see as we play the game. This is actually a very strong start for me. I'm starting with effectively two pairs. I have this pair, which is just straight in my hand. And then I also have this pair, which is I'm pairing a card with the center row card. The center row card is not usually part of the hand that's evaluated for how strong it is, um, unless it's your card and you can bring it in as part of a, a, some kind of structure. So here I'm bringing the nine into my hand as part of a pair. If I had an eight, I could bring it in as part of a run and then I'd have two strength in that column. So, um, what do I want to do first in this game? So there are two moves that you can do in a game of Cousin. You can stake a card, which means you play it, and then you get one new card from the deck to replace the card that you played. Or you can wager any number of cards, and they go into a hand behind uh, the card that you wagered them. The thing to remember here is even though they look face up to us, Fred can't actually see them. Any cards we play after these initial two cards are always face down until the end of the round. So. I want to think about my options here. I could start by defending this nine, but I probably don't want to do that right away because if Fred sees me play one card behind the nine, he'll probably think that, that it's a pair or a little run and he probably won't go in on, it, in on it. Whereas I actually do want him to attack this because when you win a battle in Cousin, you actually win all the cards that were wagered on the other side of that column. So uh, what do I have here? Maybe I will make him think my hand is weak by staking a four and get some new card. Maybe I'll get a pair. It's pretty unlikely. It's possible I should just play with what I have since I have such a strong hand. So maybe I should poke in on his eight. If I play this here, I might be able to entice him to defend this eight, which actually would be pretty good in this circumstance because I can always pay, play this pair of jacks behind it. So I'm going to do that. Let's poke in on the eight, see if maybe he decides he's going to go for value here and just go all out on my nine, in which case I could always back it up. But he didn't. He staked a card, which means his hand is pretty weak. So I am actually just going to go full in on this eight. Three is actually pretty low, but if his hand is weak, it's possible that he won't defend against four cards. He might look at that as, as, a, as a likely strength of five in that it would be a pair and then uh, two cards. Plus, I've got a card left, which makes it look like perhaps I, I have, in fact, maybe this is two of the three cards. So maybe I have like a six, seven here and an eight in my hand. So I could put the eight on the nine or I could add it to this if I get backed up, I think would be his assumption. So he played two cards to the nines. That's probably a pair. I'm going to wager my pair that his pair is lower. Otherwise... Um, I'll lose him, but that's fine. I, I'm, I'm happy to see that he's not defending the eight. So now I've played all five of my cards, which means Fred only gets one more action. So he has a lot of cards, and he uh, wagered behind his own card, which is effectively a fold. So this is great. I win the eight because he didn't defend it, and I win his four or five against my pair.
So those three cards go into my jail. You can see they're worth 17 victory points because eight plus five plus four is 17. The other, uh, if I had any face cards in there, all those face cards would be worth 10 victory points apiece, including the ace, which counts as a face card in cousin. So that's the first round. That was, that was a pretty great uh, opening for me. I didn't lose anything and I'm starting to take Fred's deck apart. So let's go to the next round. So uh, we get here and it was Fred's turn. He already staked a card before we hit next round. Uh, before we hit next round. So he'd staked this card. That was his first move. And now it is our turn. Let's see. We have a strong pair to back up our four. Although, you know, who cares? It's a four. We have an eight, nine, and we have a six. So this actually is a pretty strong start. It's five points. Unfortunately, Fred got to stake one card. So the odds that he's got five strength in his hand are also high, right? It would be nice if I could just do this. That's five strength and throw in the six to force the round over and hope that he can't defeat it. But this is a pretty big wager, and we don't know what he's got. Now, if I go something smaller, like I just put, you know, an ace ace here and I wait to back it up and, you know, worst case, I lose a pair, but I don't lose a straight. Um, oh, so side note, in general, in, in, in Cousin, you want to lose pairs, even if they're high, because uh, the more pairs you lose, the higher the odds of drawing a pair in your deck. The easy way to think about it is if you have a deck that has only four cards in it, two ones and two twos, you have a 50% chance of drawing a pair, you know, two ones or two twos when you draw two cards. But if you have, if you remove one of those pairs and then you draw two cards, you have a 100% chance of drawing a pair. So that actually holds true over a much bigger deck of cards. Anyway, what do I want to do here? So I probably, I could just push here with two aces. He'll probably back it up and then I'll probably back it up. Or I could just go all out right away and see if he um, bluffs out. The other option I could do is I could put in something low. Aces is actually such a good pair that I probably don't want to lose them. I could put in just one eight and see if he starts backing up the jack. That maybe is a good idea. It's a little safer if it turns out that he's got a really good hand. Um, this will work out for me. But if he's got a bad hand, this is going to give him more chances to uh, stake cards and build his hand up. So actually, you know, I started pretty high here. I'm just going to go all in on this jack and see if I can steal it. I'm just going to push. I usually don't play this aggressive, but I'm feeling good. I wish that I had been acting first this game. I think this would have been an even stronger move uh, as a first action because Fred is staked a card and drawn a card, which, you know, he probably didn't stake something that worked well with the jack. But given the lowness of my four over here, I feel like this is probably a pretty good move to try and just step in and take this jack. I think Fred is going to be on his back heels here. I feel like it's probably good that he hasn't just, you know, snap responded by, by pushing a bunch of cards into that column. The other thing to think about um, here is that uh, because I have three of, of Fred's cards in my jail with no pairs, um, it's unlikely that Fred is drawing pairs. So this is great. I did, in fact, bait him into pulling my four, and I get this jack for free. I guess I had such a good hand that maybe I could have tried to bait him into defending the jack a little bit. Um, but honestly, I'm just happy uh, to get the jack and to keep pushing forward. All right, so it looks like Fred has already staked a card in this game. And what are we holding? Well, we have the Poison King. So we're basically on defense. We can hope that maybe Fred's got it too. Uh, it's possible he had it last round, and that's why he was defending. But other than that, my hand is pretty bad. I've got a short run here. I've got a short run with a 10-jack. And in fact, I actually want to lose this four. Um, because it would match the four that's in his jail already, which means that, that he probably doesn't even want to take this, which, so not only is this low, but it's actually kind of a negative for him to take. So I don't have a card that he wants, and I don't have anything good to defend with. So probably if I stake a card to draw, it's likely to get attacked, so I may as well make it something small. Maybe get something good. Nine. All right, well, at least now I have an eight, nine, ten jack. 
that's a four strength run plus a high card. I don't really want to gamble with my king because it's the poison one, and if I lose it, I lose the game. And I'm so high up right now over over his four that it's not worth it. But it does give me the high card in a good situation. Maybe I'll be able to just push blindly on his last card. That's kind of a big wager. But if he stakes again, I think I might have to push on that card and hope that he didn't draw something something really killer with it. All right, so he's backing up the card he staked. That's interesting. I'm going to anticipate that to mean that he wants me to go in on his eight. He's trying to set a trap for me. So the question is, do I bite or do I hope that maybe he, you know, maybe he's not trying something fancy. Maybe he literally just has a good pair here and he doesn't want to want to show anything. So maybe I drop my eight there and just show that I'm willing to, to respond on this and see if he commits further. You know, if he doesn't commit further, then that might be a good column for me to play the rest of my hand onto. So he staked again. So he was hoping. All right. I think this is the moment where I just need to push and I need to hope that he didn't get something amazing. Four points is pretty good, and especially four with a high card. And he got six. And I lost. <laughs> ah, foolish me. Too aggressive. Well, there you go. All your fancy strategy in the world can't beat making a dumb move that's too aggressive. Anyway, that's Cousin. And uh, hopefully that gave you a better sense of how it worked. Thanks for watching.